Thank you, Lord Jesus. We'll praise God. On Wednesday, we um, taught on biblical response to economic hardship, you know. Praise the Lord. And I said that we'll conclude on that today. Okay? So, let's just do that. And um, we saw that um, Jesus had prophesied the things that are happening, isn't it? So that makes it, um, the Yoruba says something. They say that the word that has been announced will not kill the leper. Is it leper? No, the, the lame, the crippled. Ogwa, we tell you, paro. Hallelujah. The arrow should go. <laughs> okay. As the word that has been announced ahead should not kill the wise crippled. Okay. Praise the Lord. So the wise, the crippled should borrow himself brain. Right? So. So Jesus has said it. And um, so for us, we, even though we can be momentarily surprised at things, you know, like the bag of rice jumping from 28 to 45,000. You understand, you know, it's <laughs> like you feel like let me go and buy as many bags as possible <laughs> and keep in the house. So I was just thinking, that, okay, so after buying, um, will you not, will it not finish? <laughs> Praise the Lord. As if the money you are going to save won't devalue. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, I heard, you know, what's our inflation rate in Nigeria? The last, as at 20.27 uh, or something like that. 20.72 or 20.3 or something. Yeah. You know. So, I thought we were doing very badly until I saw, you know, that Turkey's inflation rate is 83%. I was like, what? Really? <laughs> I was like, okay. You know, one, and, I, and I thought about Zimbabwe. Hallelujah. Where they said that you may have to use wheelbarrow. To carry, if you want, <laughs> to carry their currency to go and buy. He said it would take, at the time it was so bad that it would cost, it would cost 20, about 20 something thousand to buy bread, a loaf of bread. But do you know what? There are still people living there. Hallelujah. And they have not all died, though. In fact, if you go to Zimbabwe now, there will be somebody who will be building a house. <laughs> Hallelujah. They said Ghana is the worst. Ghana's currency is the worst performing currency in the world at the moment. Yet, if you go there, you still see somebody building a house. You still see some people smiling to the banks. Praise the Lord. 
my friend Professor Jay in 2021, you know, he, he announced to his uh, congregation, that was in 20, no, 2020, 2020, you know, he announced to his congregation, he has a very large congregation in, in Ghana now, and he, he told them, he said, a lot of you go and buy dollars. Change from change. If, if you have any CD, go and buy. Even if it is 10 CDs, change it to dollars. You know? And of course, those who obeyed him, those who obeyed his uh, instruction, based, he said he got it in the place of prayer. You know? God can tell you things in the place of prayer. We are going to see some of those things. Amen. And of course, those who obeyed him who instructions, they are smiling to the banks now. Okay? While they see the CD devalued their own money, whatever they had. Now, I'm not saying God told me you should do that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said some people accused him that oh, he's, spoil, he's spoiling Ghana's, uh, what do you call it, currency. And then he said he told them that I might the governor. Or I might the president. Praise the Lord. So, it tells us that irrespective of the economic hardships we find ourselves, it is not new. Jesus said that there will be wars, rumors of war. There will be three things that will characterize the end of time. Right? He said this, he called them the source of sorrows. Amen. He called them the source of sorrows. He said one, there will be famine which is economic crisis. Two, there will be pestilences, which, is, which refers to health crisis. Amen. Now, they don't, you know, they used to come, they didn't used to come in quick successions like the way they come now. We thought that with the increase in knowledge, it should, the, 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 the rate at which they come should reduce. But it seems as if the rate at which they come is now more, is now faster. Hallelujah. Which day did we, did we deal with Ebola? Before another one came. You know? No, I think there was one that came before COVID. Something. Bed flu. Eh? Then Lassa fever. Then uh, uh, cow, mad cow. <laughs> Cows were going mad. <laughs> and then COVID came. Ah, like, ah, in the last 10 years. So a child who was born 10 years ago has experienced four different seasons of health, world health challenges. Ah, when I was growing up, I don't think it was that... Uh, Praise God. Hallelujah. But Jesus has already said it. So it shouldn't take us by surprise. Then the last one, he said there will be earthquakes. That's referring to environmental crisis. Nigeria is a case in point. What's the problem right we have now? Flooding. No, we used to watch those things on the television, you know, happening to other countries. You know, hardly will you think that, okay, such a thing will happen in Nigeria. What's that? I bind you. <laughs> Please help us to take care of that. Praise the Lord. Huh? Please quickly help us, quickly help us and to sort this out. Okay? So, Jesus said that, he said they are the beginning of sorrows, the source of sorrows. 
But he didn't leave us hanging. Hallelujah. <laughs> he didn't leave us hanging. He didn't leave us hanging. So what is the Christ, what should be the Christian's response? You can't wish away economic crisis. You can't wish it away. And like I said, you can't pray it away. You can't pray it away. You can't say, Lord, this thing will never happen again. In Jesus' name. Mm -mm. No, he said, they are the signs of the end of time. So how do we respond? Luke chapter 21. We, we saw Abraham's response. We saw Isaac's response. We saw Joseph's response. We saw Naomi's husband's response to economic hardship. Go and listen to it if you did not if you didn't uh, attend on Wednesday. But let's see what Jesus said. Verse 21, verse 25. He says, And there shall be signs in the moon, in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations. Distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring. <laughs> distress of nations. Nations will be in distress. Men's hearts failing them for fear. So we see the response of people, the response of nations. Hallelujah. He says that Men's heart will fail them for fear. People will be perplexed. People will be like, where, where are these things coming from? They can't understand it. So there will be perplexity. So one of the things that the devil will want to take advantage of, right, against people is to bring uh, the spirit of fear. He said men's hearts will fail them for fear. You see men, uh, people co collapsing, having a heart failure. Because of the pressures of life. Hallelujah. Men caving in. That's the world's response. And you and I must not be caught responding that way. So Jesus said all that so that you will know. So in case the spirit of fear wants to grip you, say no, that's the world's way of response. Glory to God. See, I was telling them in the church when I was preaching last night. I said, I said, the worst thing that can ever happen to you is that you will die. And when the person dies, it's faster route to get to heaven. You just got to heaven before me. Period. While people will be crying here, what would the person do? He'll be rejoicing. Even if you pray, Lord Jesus, send him back. He'll say, Lord Jesus, don't answer his prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Jesus, please don't answer their prayer. Don't mind them. <laughs> if you are in my shoe, you won't pray that prayer. <laughs> So, meaning, either way we win. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
You know, someone has come to meet me before and said, Pastor, stop talking about death. Why? Why should Jesus talked about death? So why shouldn't I talk about death? Unless you go and have what you say. Have I said I'm going to die? I haven't said so. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because the, the Bible says Jesus Christ came to deliver all those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage because of the fear of death. <laughs> so he came to deliver us from the fear of death. So you should not have the fear of death. Say, who is going to take care of my children? Who do that you are taking care of them? Is it by your power that you are taking care of them? Is their future in your hand? There are parents who are alive who are not even who are not able to take care of their children. Whenever I talk like this, sometimes my wife, my wife will say, hey, "It's because you lost your father very early." <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> I'm just a word man. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Luke 21. <laughs> Men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after these things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the earth shall be shaken. But let's run to verse 34. Hallelujah. Let's read it together. One to go. And take heed to yourselves. Lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. <laughs> so, first thing, number one, he says, take heed to yourself. So, the, Jesus is now telling us how we should respond. Number one, he says we should do what? We should take heed to ourselves. What does it mean to take heed to yourself? Let's look for another uh, 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 um, Let me do like Broguile today. Uh, let's look for uh, five different uh, uh, vers versions. When Broguile is preaching, he can give you ten. He, he can tell you to open to ten. <laughs> very, very interesting man of God. Yes, let's look for about five. What do they say? Verse 34. Yes, who has amplified message TPT? Those are the popular ones around now. You know, Living Bible, if you have it, New Living Bible, New Living Translation. So let's look for them. Anyone has seen anyone? Okay. Oh, glory to God. Which one is this one? Message. What does it say? Be on your guard. So Instead of say, take heed to yourself. You know you don't speak that one now. Imagine if you go to your office and you say, you tell them, you tell them, you are, you are in, a, in a meeting and you are trying to say, hello, first, let's be careful. You say, yeah, take heed to yourself. You say, Please, where are you coming from? <laughs> we don't use that now. So he said, be on your guard. Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dulled. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, be on your guard. Praise God. I think you need to repeat it to the ears of two people around you. Uh, tell them, tell them, tell them. Eh? Be, be, be on your guard. Be on your guard. Be on your guard. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Which other translation? Let's find another one. Which transition is that one? TPT. My wife loves it a lot. Yeah. Be careful. That you never allow your heart, you never allow your heart to, grow to grow cold. Be careful that you are not caught off guard. So, what is the first prince? What is the first response? Be on guard. Hallelujah. You know, we, we easily get carried away by the news around us. Amen. Hallelujah. When something, yeah, before we know it, we're already talking, 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 talking. He said, be on your guard. Any other transition that says this differently? 
Don't spend all of your time thinking about eating or drinking or worrying about life. So be on your guard. See, what does it mean by to be on your guard? It means don't spend your time worrying. What is the world's response? The world will worry. What is the Bible response? Uh, be on your guard. What are you guarding against? Worry. Thinking about uh, the numbers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, about two weeks ago, we were, we were having a family discussion, trying to, you know, check the school that uh, our second daughter would should put in her jam. They, they told them they should put, fill this uh, pre-jam something in their school, what course they want to do, and uh, the school, you know, and all that. So when, you know, she, she, she's always told us she wants to do a particular course and all that. So and I said, okay, so we school, we school. She told us one particular school. By the time we went to check the, what do you call it? The school fees, you know, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? Do you know what I want to say? <laughs> <laughs> You know, the way I said the hallelujah, eh? it, it spoke volumes. You know? So, so we, said, we had to start searching. What are the alternatives? What are the alternatives? You know, praise God. By the time we chose, we had to, see, I had to deal with myself so that I will not focus on the numbers. The figure. The figure is a figure. <laughs> but he said, don't spend your time doing what? Worrying. Jesus said, which one of you by worrying will add one Nano centimeter, if there's anything like that. How does the world respond? They worry, they complain. Do you know that it is not only in Nigeria that NLC is uh, in uh, which country? One of these European countries, their NLC is struck. Why? He said. Uh, High inflation. He said government has to has to match the salary with the inflation. So somebody now said, okay, if I match it today and then the inflation inflates that one, will I keep? Does it make sense? They were carrying placards. I said, ah, so this they too they can fight over inflation. Human beings are the same everywhere. So what does the Bible say? He said, be on guard. Pay attention. Take care of your heart. What did, Paul, what did Solomon say about our heart? He said, be diligent to keep our heart. Why? Because what? Out of it flows the boundaries. So the boundaries of your life are not the, will not be set by the economic indices in the nation. The boundaries of your life, they, are, they proceed from your heart. So he said, pay attention. Tell your neighbor, pay attention. It's time to pay attention to your heart. Glory to God. Back to Luke 21. He said, pay attention. Take heed, lest at any time your heart is overcharged. With the cares of this life. Amen. You know, on Sunday, Sunday night, my wife and I were discussing. 
about, you know, when we went to the market. By the time we came back, it was as if you didn't buy anything. <laughs> so he was like, so how are we going to? I now said, how many are we in the house? How many are we? I think right now we're about nine, are we? Is it seven or nine? Or between seven and nine. So I now said, said me, that, who? me, I'm not going to worry myself. Let's focus on the television we are watch, watching. <laughs> that was what I was just thinking in my heart. You know? So we were trying, okay, so where do we cut costs? What can we? We saw that we have cut, we have cut all the cuttables. <laughs> there was nothing to cut again. We can't eat sand now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, he said, he said, I said, I said, okay, well, I said, there are families that are more than us. I said, I said, there are families that are more than us. They are not earning what we are earning, right? And they are not dead. <laughs> when Brokofi came, listen, you have to guard your heart, though. See, it is a man of God, though. Where's Brokofi? It's outside. On oh, Wednesday, I didn't know when I started asking him, hey, how much do you spend in your family? Uh, so, this, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, 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 he came to do something in our house, and I, I, I didn't know when we started discussing. He said, ah, we went to the market. We went. <laughs> so, this, I was like, <laughs> see, you have to guard. Lest you worry. Pay attention. That's the one I want to focus them on the more. No, he said, pay attention. Let's look at verse 35. Let's run there. Verse 35. Pay attention to it. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Glory to God. He said in verse 35. He said, For as the snare it shall come. On those that dwell on the face, it, on the face of the earth, he said, it will come like a trap. People will be entrapped. I mean, I mean, Nigerians were, oh, there is no security anywhere. Mm, mm. Nigerians were traveling to Ukraine to go and do medical school. Who could, I mean, five years ago, could you have ever thought that what is happening in Crusade to Ukraine today would ever happen. Never. Peaceful nation, quiet, the very resourceful nation, rich. But look at them today. It's gone. It's almost, it's, the, the nation is in serious turmoil. There is no security anywhere except in God. It came like a trap unto them. Verse 36. Glory to God. Verse 36. Watch ye therefore. So, to pay attention, the second thing Jesus says is what? Watch. Watch. Then the third thing he says is what? Pray. So there is a place of prayer. He said, pray always. He said, he said, pay attention to your heart to watch. Be watchful. What does it mean to be watchful? Hallelujah. Glory to God. What does it why, why, what does Jesus mean by saying we should we should be watchful? It means you have got to be you to develop an awareness. See, watch over your heart. Watch what is happening around. So that you will know how to respond. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Develop an awareness that you are living in an ever-changing world. Glory to God. You've got to develop it. 
as, like I said on Wednesday, to watch also means be alive, be alert. You know, when somebody is sleeping, right? Do you have Megad in your house? You don't have Megad in your house. Who, who's, who has Megad in their house? You have Megad in your house. What is on STP? Under STP, what is your Megad meant to be doing at night? Is he meant to be sleeping? No. Who is meant to be doing do, do, who is meant to be doing the sleeping? That's why I said under STP. You understand what I uh, STP standard television and pressure, under normal circumstances. Hallelujah. For art students who don't know STP. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't abuse you now. I, I, I was just stating the facts, you know. You that was why you went to arts class. <laughs> 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 Praise God. So, uh, so, so, the Megad is meant to be awake. For those of us online, if you don't know what Megad is, that's the person that is guarding your house. Your security person, okay? Praise God. So, it's, it's meant to be awake. It's, it's meant to be at alert. It's meant to be watching. His senses are meant to be, you know, at a lot. When you are asleep, you are as good, almost as good as dead because you don't even know what's happening in your environment. So when Jesus said, watch, he's saying, watch what's happening in your environment. Hallelujah. Be at a lot as a human being. Don't just be moving bundusiously. The Bible says it is a fool. He said it is a fool that sees danger ahead and still stays there. The wise man does what? The prudent man, he, he, he docks it. Glory to God. See, be aware, be at alert. Amen. So, he tells us. We should watch. So how do we watch? Quickly, Jeremiah chapter 17. How do we watch? How do we watch? Jeremiah chapter 17. Let's begin to read from verse 5. By watching, he is not saying that you should soak in every information because all not all information you know are useful verse 5 oh 17 I, I was opening to verse 7 chapter 7 verse 5 let's all read it together one to go cursed thus says the lord cursed is the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departs from the Lord. He said, Cursed is the man that does what? That trusts in man. So he said, We've got to be watchful lest we operate under a curse. What is the curse that you trust in man? Friends, in this day and age, in this season, in this time of economic hardship, hallelujah, glory. Someone says, is it going to get better? Well, no, let me shut up my mouth. Is it going to get better? Jesus said that in the latter times, difficult times will come. You know, we used to say those days, it go better, it go better, it go better, it go better. Isn't it? But it really seems as if it's what? It's... You know? Andrew, don't check out. It's going to be better. But it looks as if the rate of checking out is more now. Because that is one of the responses we said on Wednesday. The first response, in the first, the first economic problem that, that was recorded in the Bible, what was the response? Migration. 
Abraham Jack bad with his family. So he's not new. Praise the Lord. But he said, cost is the man. He said, in this season, you cannot afford to trust in man. You can't even afford to trust in man. Man, including you yourself, gone. He said, he, anyone that trusts in, the, in man or trusts in the arm of flesh, that is, in the abilities of man. Glory to God. Elon Musk got into Twitter. First thing, he sacked everybody. Hallelujah. Five years ago, those who were in Twitter thought they had job security. <laughs> Five years ago, I'm sure they never ever thought that Elon Musk would ever come and buy them. Even last year. Hallelujah. No trust. See, don't trust in man. Tell your neighbor, don't trust in man. Oh. I've told you the story of my friend in secondary school whose, whose uncle was a lieutenant colonel in the army. And that one had told him, don't worry. You know, he was a colonel. Don't worry. You are going to NDA. Just finish secondary school. I'm here. You are going to NDA. So for years, the guy was not too serious. He was just, he was always backbenching in class. Yeah, my uncle is there. My uncle is there. One day, I just saw him in our... Prime, uh, in, in our uh, last session, I think, was it our last session or uh, second to the last? You know, in secondary school, I wonder, I just saw his face morose. I was looking down. Ah. I said, manager, what's up now? I said, ah. The guy was in tears. He said, hey, got my uncle. I told you about. Got my uncle. Yeah, what happened to your uncle? He's dead. And that was how his dream of going to ND died. Hallelujah. Trusted in man. Devil. Don't trust in man. Not necessarily because the man is a bad man. Because anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Glory to God. That will give him the, it will make him unable to be able to fulfill his promise. Praise God. So, so one of the things which you watch out for is that what? Don't trust in man. I learned this from Brother uh, or Roberts. He said, he said, he used to make a statement. He said, God is my source of total supply. He wrote a book like that many years ago. God is my source of total supply. Man is just a vessel. One can close and others will open. <laughs> one, man can, one can close and others will open. Cost is the man. That's a very strong word, isn't it? Say, like cost is the man who puts his trust in man. And makes the arm, the, and make it flesh his arm. Hallelujah. Let me read, give me, give me the message translation of that scripture. Let's read it from the message translation. Let's see how it puts it. Praise God. Message translation and new living translation. I like to read it from those two. Praise God. Verse, verse, verse 5. Verse 5. Cost is the strong one who depends on mere humans. Who thinks he can make it on muscle alone and sets God aside as dead weight? So cursed is that man. He depends on mere humans. Who thinks he can make it on muscle alone? Are you listening to me? Mo okay, as strong as the muscle is, 
what if muscle atrophy disease happens? What kind of disease is muscle atrophy? When you're, when atrophy means something that is wasting, Abi. Uh -huh. There are diseases that can cause your muscles to just, to just be wasting. Hallelujah. One of the richest men in the world at one time is just started drying up. No, no, he just started drying up. You know, there was no food that he could eat that could increase his weight. He just started drying up. He dried up until he died because of cancer. Causes the man who thinks muscle alone. Ah, hallelujah. And because we live in a physical world, we think, you know, we just think that muscle, I mean, muscle, you, 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 look at, you look at the unbeliever and say, ah, this guy is an unbeliever. Can't you say, and he's making it, he's making it, he's, he's doing well, he's, so he's like, cast is the man who thinks is all muscle. Hallelujah. This is another one, isn't it? Thus says the Lord, cursed with great evil. Oh God. <laughs> is the strong man who trusts in and relies on frail man. Making weak human. Human flesh is arm. And whose mind and heart turn aside from the Lord. Say to yourself, I'll not trust in man again. Married people, don't put all your trust on your spouse. Why? Your spouse is human. Did you hear what I said? Married people, am I correct? Me, I've disappointed my wife many times. She buy me, she buy, and you land in trouble. You say, ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, God never says I'm sorry to anybody because it's never wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, verse 7. He said, Look, um, let me know if I read verse 6, in fact, it will. He, he tells us, verse 6 tells us the consequences. He said that person, he will be like the heath in the desert. Give me that message translation. Yeah, he will be like the heath in the desert. He will not see when good comes. Ah. He, said, he won't see when good comes. He said, he said, he said he's like a tumbleweed on the prairie, out of touch with the good earth. And lives rootless and aimless on a land where nothing grows. Hallelujah. He lives in a land where nothing grows. Because why? He has put man as his muscle. Praise God. Not only man. Write this down. It also means physical processes and institutions. Physical processes and institutions. NH, NHS, NHIS failed during COVID. Because many of... Oh, when I say NHIS, I'm not talking about the Nigerian one, no. NHS, the one in the UK. NHS. NHS failed. Why? Because many of the people who are even running the NHS, many of them died. Why do you think they are recruiting uh, a lot of nurses from Nigeria and doctors? It's to fill those spaces. Hallelujah. Thank God for government. Oh, if we have good government, we'll have a better nation. Right? If we have a better government, we'll have a better nation. If our government, you know, but do you know what? If we can't depend on them. I will vote, but I can't depend on them. Even the person that I feel may be my best candidate, if I vote, the Bible says, cost am I if I depend on him? 
I must operate on the spiritual plane. Glory to God. Glory to God. Am I saying something here this morning? Hey Amen. Matthew, how else do we respond? Praise God. Uh, 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 okay, I was talking about verse 7. He said, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. So how do I watch? The first thing in watching is that I must do a heart shift. My heart from, must shift from man, from institutions of men. I must shift it to the Lord. Please, if you weren't in church two, two Wednesdays ago, right? If you weren't in church two Wednesdays ago, two Wednesdays ago, right? Where uh, Pastor Tosin taught us on trusting the Lord. Please go and get that message. Such a, it was such a blessing. I had to send him a, a message. Thank you, Pastor Tosin, for blessing us. I was so blessed. So, there has to be a what? A heart shift. Tell your neighbor, heart shift. Come on, tell him again, heart shift. Many are the plants in the heart of a man. But it is the Lord that directs his steps. I have it all for God. You don't have it all. You don't. You don't. You don't have it all figured out. Glory to God. You don't. But our trust is in God. What did he say will happen to that person? When he trusts in the Lord. He said, bless this man who trusts in the Lord. I love the way he, he, King James says this. He said, he said, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. And that spreads out his root by the river. He, will, he, will, he shall not see when heat comes. The other one will see when heat comes. But he said, he won't see when heat comes. But her leaf shall be green and he will not be anxious in the year of drought. Did you say that? So, so there's going to be a year of drought. Tell your neighbor, there's going to be a year of drought. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not a prophecy. It is, I mean, it is not a curse. He said there will be a year. He said there will be a year of drought. That is the way the world is. He said, but what is going to happen to him? He said, in the year of drought, he will not be anxious about anything. Neither shall he cease from yielding fruits. Hallelujah. Are you glad about that? Neither shall you cease from what? Yielding fruits. Neither shall you cease from yielding fruits. So, now number one, how to watch? Let there be what? A heart shift. Rest your weight on God. Rest your weight on God. Rest your weight on God. How is the school fees going to be paid? Rest your weight on him. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Why? He said, the heart is deceitful. See, if you just focus on your, if you don't do that heart shift, the heart will deceive you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, but God was one that sent me there. In fact, God, God gave me a vision about that business. And he told me how to do it, and I entered, and then you failed. So, ha! It's not new. God sent Elijah to brook cherries. He drank and drank and was filled. He was fed and was. And then what happened? What happened? The brook dried. Say, ha! If it is God that sent him there, the brook should not dry. Says who? Says who? Hallelujah. Why? Because uh, upon the earth, there is going to be environmental uh, problem. That God sent you there does not mean that uh, there will not be environmental problem. He said pestilence, uh, earthquakes will take place. He said, see, but see that you are not perturbed. And when God, when that one dried up, uh, Oluwa, it has dried up. Oh. God said, okay. Oh, yeah, move. There is always, you remember I taught us last week that these earthquakes and all these things, they won't happen everywhere at the same time. So, God, he said, God, he said, I have already, and look at it. He said, I have already instructed 
a woman in Zarephath. Now, look at, did, when he got there, did that woman look like someone that had been instructed? What, did she say, oh, yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, God had already told me. No, the woman was going to cook her last meal. Eat, and she and her son will die. That was her testimony. Yet, God said, I, the way God talks, said, come on, don't put your trust in man. Don't put your trust in man. He said, he said, he said, he said, don't worry. I have instructed her to feed you. <laughs> and how was it going to come? It was going to come through a miracle that Elijah would do. The ways of God are past finding out. Trust him. See, trust him blindly. He's, he's someone you can trust blindly. They said, don't trust human beings blindly, Abby. Uh, but God, you can trust him blindly. You can, you can close your eyes uh, and trust him blindly. He said, I have instructed him. If you were Elijah and you got to that place, I said, okay, this is the woman. You would have been thinking that, ah, you say, ah, I've actually prepared. You would think that she would be a wealthy woman. You know, Elijah, God didn't say, I've prepared a, a wealthy woman. He said, I've prepared a woman. Go to Zarephath. So, if you were the one, you would have thought, ah, ah, I'm going to a Kashogi's house. He's going to take care of me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God that provided the ravens, uh, that provided Brooke Sherry's, he has, he, he has provided the multi-millionaire of the day only for her to get there and say that she was the poorest of all. She only had one meal left. Does, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Are you listening to me? You know, when you read Bible, read and think like that, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So God will take you to places where it doesn't make sense. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will take you to places where it does not what? Make sense. Everybody is saying go this way, going this way. Everybody is going that way. And in fact, you are seeing them that they are actually prospering going that way. They are, you, are, you are actually seeing it. And, and then you want to go and God said no. Say, ah, which is Jimmy Nicole. Am I am I have I been called to a life of suffering? No. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Out of the strong comes the sweet. Remember Samson? Out of the strong comes the sweet. He was talking about the dead lion. Out of the dead lion came the honey. God can bring anything from anywhere. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It won't allow you to be disgraced. You will not be disgraced. You will not be disgraced. You will not be disgraced. Cool. Let's round up. Matthew chapter 14. Paul, you can talk. Ah. Praise God. Matthew chapter 14. Verse 15. Matthew 14. Another response. Bible response to economic hardship. When it was evening, the disciples of Jesus came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals, food. But Jesus said, ah, They don't need to depart. Give them food to eat. <laughs> yes, <we shall. laughs> Give them food to eat. They don't need to go. They are talking about over 5,000 people. So 5,000 men with, besides the women and children. So, estimatedly, you know, maybe our 15. Or, let's even be conservative, 10. You know, women are usually more than men in meetings. If you count now, you see that there are more women. It's only King's Church that has been defined that a little bit sometimes. You know, but most women, in spiritual meetings, you see more women. Because more women are more spiritually inclined than men. The man will say, say you go, you go. Let me just be watching. Let me, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> stupid. They can be stupid sometimes. <laughs> and they said unto him, we have only five loaves and two fishes. 
to feed 5,000. Jesus said, no problem, bring it here. And he commanded the multitude to sit down. Now, see, if you were the disciples, how will you be thinking? What will you be thinking of at that time? We've seen him heal, but this one we are, let's see, okay, you know, the last time you talked against him, you know he, he, he made you look like a fool. So just keep quiet. Obey him. And what did he do? He took the five loaves and the two fishes. Looking up to heaven, what did he do? He blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples to the multitude. What did he do? He blessed. Go to chapter 15. We see, we see chapter 15. Praise God. Chapter 15. Let's check verse 36. Now, here he fed the 7,000. He said, and he took the seven loaves and the fishes and did what? And did what? So, in, in chapter 14, when he said that, he looked up and he blessed. So, what was the blessing? Give thanks. In the midst of scarcity, not enough. What did Jesus do? Give thanks. So what is the Bible response to economic challenge and difficulty? Give thanks. Never. You know, the amount of sound of thanksgiving is usually stifled amen in the time of scarcity but he says no this is the way we should operate do what don't let your thanksgiving cease hallelujah don't let your thanksgiving what cease don't let it cease so why are you watching part of your watching you say yeah, 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 Col Col uh, Colossians chapter 2 Colossians chapter 2, verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 6, verse 6, verse 6, said, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. Huh? Hmm? Do what? So walk in him. Do how? How? He said, rooted. And what? Grounded. Right? And always doing what? Abounding. I hope I'm correct. Eh? abounding with thanksgiving so what does it mean to abound let it continue to increase so abounding means to increase which means that our thanksgiving must never decrease so in the time of famine let your thanksgiving abound let it increase hallelujah had the story of George, George Fuller, I think George Fuller, he said that ran an orphanage, right? He was a man of God in his days, you know, ran an orphanage. He said they would not, he said he, himself and the, in his orphanage, there's no food. He said they would just sit down and say, and give thanks to God, right? Let us give thanks to God. Let's say, Father, thank you for providing food for us. Father, thank you for providing food for us. While they are doing that, many times somebody will just come and knock on the door. By the time the person they open the door, they will not see anybody, but they will see food there. That was how he fed, he ran the orphanage by faith. So, of course, when you know winning formula, Amen. So the children, when they say, oh yeah, let's gather, let's give thanks. Because they've seen it before, they give thanks. And he said, it's happened repeatedly. He said, they, will, they won't see the person that brought the food. They just, they'll just hear a knock on the door. The person will just drop it and run away. And they will see food there. Listen, God will provide for you. Amen. God will take care of you. Amen. Wherever you are. Hallelujah. The, the land will not be a patched land for you. 
in the name of Jesus. He said you will still yield food. Even in the time of famine. Even in the season of economic hardship. He will take care of you. Blessed is the man that puts his trust in the Lord. He said he will not see when heat comes. Which means it's going to be provided for. Which means it's going to be shaded by God. When everybody says that there's a casting down. You will say that there's a lifting up. Because the Lord is a lifter up of our head. We will not stop giving thanks. We will not stop doing our worship on Wednesday. Day. We will not stop giving our thanks every day, day in, day out. We will not stop lifting up our voice. Oh, David said, I will lift up my voice unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Oh, he said, He will not allow your feet oh, to, 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 to dash. Oh, even the stone. Glory to God. He will give His angels charge over you, they will keep you. He will survive it. You will survive it. You will survive it. At the end of the survival, there is going to be a lifting. Because what does our father do? Our father always lifts. After a test, is a testimony. After you go through, you are going to pass the test and you are going to be lifted. Glory to God. When you do exams and you pass, you don't remain in the same class. What happens? You go to the next class. You go to an elevated place. God is elevating somebody here. God is elevating us. Irrespective of how hard it is, you are going up. Oh, come on, say it three times. I'm going up. I'm going up. I'm going up. Glory to God. I'm going up. I'm going up. Glory to God. I'm going up. Lift up your hands unto God and praise his name. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Even if you have lost so much. Hallelujah. Even if you have lost so much. Even if you have lost so much. Even if you have lost so much. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said he will not see when heat comes. <laughs> he said he won't stop yielding fruit. He said he's still going to help you. Ah, hallelujah. How many of us need help today? Father, Baba, I need help. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm not ashamed to say it. Oh. Hallelujah. I need help. Lord, if you don't help me, who will help me? Eh? The king said to the to those to those two women uh, in Samaria after when it was busy, he tore his clothes. He said, he said help us. He said, ah, how can I help you? I can't help you. It's only God. If God does not help, we are finished. But God is our helper, He's our present, ever present help. Is our refuge and strength, uh, our ever present help uh, in the time of need. Uh, glory to God. Uh, it will cause all things to work together. Oh, for your good. Uh, oh, don't trust in horses. Uh, don't trust in chariots. Uh, don't trust in your degrees. Uh, oh, don't trust in your degrees. Uh, oh, don't trust in it. Uh, don't trust in your business acumen. Uh, don't trust in it. Uh, 